Praise the Lord. Let's go and into prayer. Father, and you are our Father, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for Jesus. Father, we thank you for the name of Jesus. Like Patty said this morning, we just like to say it, Father. It brings us comfort, shelter, deliverance, healing, everything we need, Lord. We thank you, Father, for the blood that backs it up, Father God. Thank you, Lord God. This evening, Father, I pray, Father God, that the Holy Spirit, the true teacher, speaks through me what he wants the, your children to hear, Father, and help me to leave off what he, what he doesn't want, Father. And Father God, help your children illumine their hearts and minds, Father, to take in what the Spirit is saying, Father. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, Lord, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Forgot my funny, so. Okay, I'm teaching on um, continue. I hope it says up there, continue, okay. <laughs> First of all, I want to say this. Jesus in red said this. John 13, 20. That's John 13, 20. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who receives whomever I send receives me. Now, this was spoken from the Holy Ghost through Jerry Savelle. It is a prophetic word from God through his servant, Jerry Savelle. Okay. It says, for 2016, extraordinary things are taking place in the heavenlies. 2016 will become to be known the year of the great breaking loose. More and more notable miracles will break loose on the earth. More and more signs and wonders. More and more angelic visitations. More and more instant healings. More and more deliverances from demonic activity. More and more finances will break loose on, so my people can do more for the kingdom of God. And he goes on to say, if you want one of these, I'll duplicate it for you. Just let me know. And during this time of the great breaking loose, the enemy will no longer be able to hold back that which my faithful ones have stood in faith for. Not even the things that look as though they would never come to pass. For I will cause them to break loose and to suddenly manifest and to do so in such a way that no one will be able to deny the greatness of your God. Amen. Yes, in 2016 will be a year in which the faithful shall be rewarded beyond the highest, their highest expectations. And they shall abound in my blessings as never before. I get excited, Regent, and I read it quite often at home. I'll duplicate one for you. This is prophetic um, pro prophecy from God. Okay. And um, it enters into my sermon. Okay. I'm going to start with 2 Timothy 3.14. 2 Timothy 3.14. You must continue, Paul was saying to Timothy, you must continue in the things which you have learned. Continue in the things that you know to do. God has a plan for your life. You are on his path. Just continue to do the things you have learned and know to do. So I named some things that we, I believe that we all have learned and we know to do. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't learned to know, to, you'll know tonight. Okay. Right. One of the things you know and have learned to do is pray. Mm -hmm. Colossians. 4, 2. That's Colossians 4, 2. It says, continue earnestly in prayer. Be vigilant in it with thanksgiving. And now I use a lot of scripture because the word is living and active and yeah. powerful. I just, I mean, I like to speak it out of my mouth and it just goes into your spirit yeah. by the Holy Ghost. Okay. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 and 18. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 and 18. Pray 
without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So you can really take that scripture and say, you are in the will of God if you are praying and giving thanksgiving. If you want to GMI in the will of God, just pray and give thanksgiving. You are in his will. Okay. A lot of people get mixed up like that. Jude one twenty. That's Jude one twenty. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues. Okay. If you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, then you can pray in English, in your known language. Okay. I'm going to go a little further on that. 1 Corinthians 14, 14 and 15. It says, 1 Corinthians 14, 14 and 15. For if I pray in tongues, my spirit is praying. But I don't under... This is the New Living Translation. For if I pray in tongues, my spirit is praying. But I don't understand what I am saying. Well then, what shall I do? I will do both. I will pray in the spirit, pray in tongues. And I will pray in the words I understand. I will sing in the spirit, in tongues. And I will sing in the words I understand. Just a brief side note here. I, I, I was um, singing in my bathroom, getting ready and everything uh, yesterday. Just singing and singing, singing in the spirit. Just singing in tongues. I sang and I sang and I sang. Y'all, y'all, I sang a lot. And I'm not telling you, my day went so smooth. I mean, I'm just, I'm just telling you, things happen. Because see, you're praying to God. You're praying. As pastor taught one day, you're praying out things and you're praying in things. Yes. It was a good sermon. I like that pastor. Okay. <laughs> Okay, now Acts, next, now next, next. Acts 14.22 says, Paul and Barnabas was at Iconium, Antioch, and Lystra, and one more city which I couldn't pronounce, so I didn't add it. Okay. <coughs> Paul says, they strengthened the believers, they encouraged them to continue in the faith. The word is the faith producer. The word is the faith producer. Okay, produces faith. Okay, Romans 10 and 17. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith producer. Okay, so if you ain't got enough faith, get pile on the word. So continue in the word. Reading, listening to CDs, TV preaching, and, and, most important, your local church, what your pastor is preaching on. So, remember, receive your pastors and their words as coming right from God. Okay, I got the scripture on that. John 13, 20. He who receives, whomever I send, receives me. God knows where you go to church. He knows. He gives the pastors just what you're going to need to continue on the right path. Okay, and, and, and Ish was teaching this morning, do not ponder the past. Well, I tell you, I really like that. I'll tell you why not because of my husband. It's because I needed to hear. I was pondering on the past. I'm telling you, that will make you discouraged. I was pondering all, I hate to say it, y'all, but I was pondering on all the things when I was a kid that I didn't have that the other kids had. I'm as old as I am. I was pondering on all the things that them kids have that I didn't have. Now, that is stupid, so don't do that. You see, you let, don't do that. So stop pondering on the past. Stop pondering on that. The scripture says, again, the scripture says, continue in the things you have learned and know to do. So you have learned faith in this church, because pastor preaches faith all the time. Okay. You know to continue using your faith. Now, remember, low word level, low faith level. High word level, high faith level. And you know how to get it? Get in the word. Produces faith. Food produces energy for, physical, for your physical body. The word produces faith for spiritual strength. Spiritual muscles, Ken Copeland always says. Okay. Next. I couldn't, you know, give you the whole Bible tonight, so I have to do these things. Okay, next. You, now you are taught to stand your ground where the devil is concerned. 
continue to do it. Jesus defeated the devil. Colossians 2.15. Colossians 2.15. Having disarmed principalities and powers, devil and his demons, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. James 4, 7 says, Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. And I have a habit now, I mean, I'm just trying to get in there, if Jesus defeated him, just resist him because he's lies all the time. All the time, resist him. Okay, resist the devil. I rebuke you, I resist you in Jesus' name. Ephesians 6, 13 and 14, the beginning of 14. Ephesians 6, 13 and the beginning of 14. Having done all to stand, stand therefore on what? On the promises of God and anything that you need in your life or anything that's going on in your life, stand. You prayed, you took the promise to God, now you stand. Stand on the promise, resist the devil's lies. Now he comes along and says things like, that isn't ever going to happen. You see, he's lying about God's faithfulness. So you, you just come along with the scripture. Now, I happen to have this one. I really like this. I got a revelation on this one. Isaiah 46, 11. Truly I have spoken. Truly I will bring it to pass. Now, think about that. Think about that is God's scripture, God's word, God's powerful, energizing word. Think about the um, prophecy I just read. Truly I have spoken. Truly I will bring it to pass. Whew, glory to God. Okay, now, again I say, continue in the things you have learned. Do the things you know to do. Okay, the next one is praise God. Praise Him in the morning, praise Him at noon, praise Him at night. And I, the, I found the scripture, Deborah, and, and 149. <laughs> Praise him on your bed with a two-edged sword in your hand. Hallelujah. Okay. Psalms 113.3 says, From the rising of the sun to the time that it goes down, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Hebrews 13.15 Therefore by him let us continue continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. Okay. Listen to this. One forty nine six, one forty nine Psalms, verse six. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two edged sword in their hand. That's God's word. Stop all the lies of the devil. And in the Bible it says fiery darts coming at you all the time. Stop them. And say, you know what? The word of God says everything that has breath, praise the Lord. I have breath, devil, and I'm going to praise him. You see, you've got to talk back to him. Them filthy lies all the time. Okay. Psalms, um, Psalms 148, Psalms 149, Psalms 150 says, Praise the Lord! Exclamation point. Now, Psalms 150, verse 6 says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So that's about says it about all if you if that says it all if you think about it. Are you breathing? Yeah. If you are, we will um, pray over you and bring you back to life. <laughs> Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. That settles it. Okay. Next, be faithful. Yes. Be faithful, and you have learned about faithfulness, and you know to be faithful because we are taught that in this church. Okay. Whatever you have committed to do in this church, be faithful. Mm -hmm. Be faithful to attend church. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go somewhere with this. Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking, or another one says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. That's God telling you. That is not a suggestion. That's God. So be faithful in your um, attendance. Be faithful in your tithes and offerings. Great benefits from that. Great benefits. Be faithful to your boss. Just be known as a faithful person. I, that's a good thing. I like. I would like to be known as a faithful person. You can count on him. I'm telling you, you can count on him. 
count on her, count on him. Okay. And then, this is what really excited me, way back yonder in my old church, okay. Proverbs 28, 20, I believe you all know this. A faithful man will abound in blessings. I've heard that, oh, let's see, 25 years before, something like that. I'm telling you, that stunned me. I, you know, I want blessings. I want things to go good, you know what I mean? I want. A faithful man will abound in blessings. So all you have to do is be faithful. You're going to abound in blessings. And remember what the prophecy said. It's the faithful ones. It's the faithful ones. Luke 12, 42. Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his master will make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of food in due season? God, believe it or not, God needs faithful people he can team up with. He teamed up with Moses and got the job done. <laughs> he teamed up with Moses and got the job done. God needs you to be faithful and alert to spiritual things. And that's where I put, remember the prophetic word says 2016 will be a year in which the faithful shall be rewarded beyond their highest expectation. Woo! I'm telling you, that is that is great. Okay, we are also we have you have learned. I know you learned this, and this is not last but least. Walk in love with one another. Okay, I'm working on that. Walk in love with one another. First Corinthians 13, one through three. I know we read the other ones, four through eight, but I'm going to read one through three. First Corinthians 13, one through three. New Living Translation. If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans, and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I had to the poor and even sacrificed my body, but if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Here we go. This is the New Living Translation. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand or seek its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wrong. Right. It does not rejoice with injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures every circumstance. Love never fails. That's, I'm telling you, them are powerful words. Love never fails. So. Okay, my last one is continue to walk in peace. Romans 12, 18. If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Romans 13, 17. Romans 13, 17. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Keep your peace no matter what. I am really working on that, y'all. I'm working on my peace. I have dog problems at my house, and I, I yell at them. I yell at them, y'all, until I realize that, that that's not right. I am not supposed to be yelling at these dogs all the time. I mean, like, do they, do they care, you know? Okay. So I really had to correct that. Okay. <laughs> if you lose it, step away and get right back in peace. Very powerful. Being in peace is powerful. Okay. Because the devil wants to steal the peace. He works in strife, chaos, irritability, anger. Those are his. Peace is our God. Stay in peace. So continue in what you have learned and what you know. And I'm going to name them. And if you could think of some more, that's wonderful. Okay. Prayer, 
read the Bible, keep the faith, resist the devil, <clears throat> praising and thanking God from the morning to night, be faithful, stay steady, and stay stable. Walk in love, stay in peace. These three scriptures just came to me. Hebrews 12, 2. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Philippians 1, 6, New King James. Being confident of this very thing, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it till the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the expanded Bible says, Be confident of this very thing, that he who has began a good work, he will continue to do it. It will be finished and completed when Jesus Christ comes again. We have another page, okay? Okay. So, Galatians... I'm sorry, I think it's Galatians. You'll know it when I you'll know it when you hear it. I forgot to put it, y'all. It's in Galatians 6, I think. Let us not grow weary while doing good. Let us not grow weary while continuing in the things we know to do. Let us not grow weary in doing good. For in due season we shall be, if we do not lose heart. Stay steady, stay stable. And, oh, I have a little tiny testimony here. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see, I married her 17 years ago. My mother was ill, but um, she had sense enough to ask me this question. <laughs> she wanted to know, she says, has this man got a good job? <laughs> <laughs> she didn't care, you know, he didn't care what, what kind of person was or anything. Does this man have a good job? Is he stable? Is he steady? Do you, you, I don't want you going to the poorhouse. <laughs> Because she used to have to help me. She, she, monetarily, she used to have to help me, even while I was married to my ex and when I got divorced. Is he stable? <laughs> Is he stable? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mama, yes, Mama. And you know what's so sad? He, she died uh, about eight days before we married. You know, he, I mean, she didn't get a chance to meet him. You know, she, he, We went to her funeral, but that would help. Okay, but I, I'm saying, stay continued in the things and stay stable and stay steady. I'm going to say one more thing. <laughs> when I was at, before I married him, I was at Walmart, okay, and um, I, used to, I used to complain to God, I hate to say it, but I says, Lord, I just, I go to work, I go to church, I come home, I clean my house, I go to work, I come home to see it was that don't grow weary, don't go weary doing good, don't go weary. And just like that, I had a suddenly. I had a new husband. I mean, within we were married within a, a little over a month. New husband, brand new house. Nobody lived in it. Praise God, first time ever. New house, new car, new church, new people, new pastor. I mean, and I had a lot of things. I married a rich man. <laughs> So keep on going. Stay steady. Stay stable because there is a suddenly coming. Yeah. And I love this. If anybody wants, if anybody wants this prophecy, I will duplicate it for them. Amen. In Jesus' name, um, I believe I'm done. Amen. <laughs>